Hello friends, welcome to Nandip Academy Summer Prom Program. Today we are going to discuss a question uh, which has been in news recently, a problem which we see across states in India. So the question for today is uh, increasing human population and the resulting need for additional land are encroaching on wildlife habitats, increasing human wildlife conflict. I mentioned the causes of conflict between humans and the wild animals and suggest some measures to reduce it. So this answer is supposed to be written in 250 words. Now, if you look at the question, the focus part of this question is what are the causes uh, of conflict between humans and wildlife? And the second focus is suggest some measures for the same or to reduce it. And the locus here is the increasing the number of incidents that have been increasing across the states. Okay. So, uh, because you see across uh, so many states, Uttarakhand, you have uh, Kerala, then you have Karnataka, you have Maharashtra, uh, you have Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, so many states we have, uh, you know, been reading about these incidents happening. So, we can expect this question uh, in the mains exam. So, uh, we'll see how to deal with this question. Now, in the introduction part, because we have a locus on uh, human and wildlife conflict uh, there is scope to define what is human and wildlife conflict okay one definition and one supporting fact from the current affairs would be a, a good part in this introduction so when you're defining what human wildlife conflict is instead of defining in a very vague and a generic way it is always good to introduce this using some official or authentic agency now for example this definition that i've given here comes from worldwide fund Okay, so WWF uh, defines human wildlife conflict as any interaction between humans and wildlife that results in negative impacts of human, social, economic or cultural life on the conservation of wildlife population or on the environment. Okay, now along with this definition, you will also have to give some numbers official numbers uh, in India, which suggest that yes, this conflict of human and wildlife is uh, increasing day by day. So according to the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change in the last five years, we have seen 293 people have died due to tiger attacks and nearly 2,657 people have died due to elephant attacks. At the same time, between these years of 2018 to 2021, we see that almost 222 uh, elephants across the country also have uh, fell victim to this conflict. Now, though human wildlife con conflict is not restricted only to tigers and elephants, but this is the most major chunk out of these conflicts. Okay, so we are taking numbers for these two species especially. Now, in the body part, the first focus is what are the causes of human and wildlife conflict. Now, most of the students will be in a position to write the causes, but what I want you to do differently is that you should have examples to, uh, you know, some examples from India, which would make a point. Now, for example, habitat destruction. Now, everyone is going to write that there is a destruction of habitat and that is the reason why most of the wild animals come into human settlements. But here, along with writing this point, you also ha should have some facts from India State of the Forest Report 2021. Okay, so always try to give some supporting facts to what you're writing. Then there is habitat loss, degradation and fragmentation of uh, wildlife habitat because of developmental projects. Okay, then there is disturbance in the food chain. If there is uh, inadequate or incomplete food chain, the wild species tend to come into the human settlements. Then there is adverse climate events. Uh, you see examples, uh, Kaziranga, right? Now, because of floods, you see a lot of animals coming uh, out of the forest and that results into human wildlife conflict. And this happens across many states. Then there is succession, success of conservation efforts also. Now, because of some uh, efforts or some programs, you know, for example, uh, Project Tiger, the number of tigers has been increasing and we see a lot of experts raising questions as to how much of this number is going to be sufficient because we all, uh, already have 75% of the targets, 75% of uh, tigers uh, of the world population. So, a lot of successful conservation efforts have resulted into increasing wildlife population. Then there is deforestation and agricultural extension in the forest areas. Okay. Then competition for resources also is one example. 
right so these are all the causes why we see increasing human and wildlife conflict now when we come to the solutions uh, here you should have very uh, you know key studies if you can mention any uh, incidents globally if you can uh, mention how to uh, go about or deal with these conflicts the first and the most important is involvement of local communities now this participatory approach of uh, conservation in environment is always talked about but uh, in dealing with the human wildlife conflict also involvement of local communities is going to be very important now this is actually suggested by UNEP and WWF there was a report in 2021 by the name a future for all the need for human wildlife coexistence so what is WWF and UNEP focusing on it is coexistence it is of the clear view that human wildlife conflicts cannot be completely stopped and humans or people living around the forest need to be trained in coexistence okay then you have construction of fences or barrages right so we have project rehab uh, in kerala building of fences now what kind of fences they have to be uh, like they do in africa right they build solar fences because in India the fences we build uh, because of that lot of elephants are e electrocuted so building fences and barriers under this project rehab is also one good example here we are using bees to actually stop elephants from coming into the human settlements okay so uh, guard dogs uh, deterring predators this is also one example and this has been successful in Africa so saving lions there in Africa has been a very good case study so using guard dogs to deter the uh, predators then early warning system using technologies you can have some sensors also or applications which can alert people uh, living around the forest about the movement of the animals and then there is compensation to victims to avoid retaliatory killings in case there is some attack uh, on the uh, cattle, the farmers or the people living around should be compensated uh, so that they do not retaliate and kill the animals back. Okay, so these are all the uh, solutions we can uh, think of for human wildlife conflict. But more important here is that please try to write these examples in your answers. Okay, now when you conclude uh, this again, uh, this concept of cohabitation is very important here okay so IUCN says that human wildlife conflict cannot be completely eliminated so cohabitation should be the main objective of managing this issue okay then to help communities who live near forest lessen the reliance on them then government should promote socio-economic development because of this development uh, as long as the people are dependent on the forest for their livelihoods this conflict is only going to increase so with socio-economic development they can look for some new avenues uh, uh, for earnings then the government should also give communities the technical know-how and organizational support the need to integrate coexistence into planning and management okay so this way you can uh, comprehensively uh, conclude the issue so that's all for today thank you have a nice day